Hello everyone, and welcome to today's video. This is a fully parametric mirror cube that I designed in Fusion 360. Many people will be familiar with the Rubik's Cube, which uses colors on the faces. The mirror cube is similar, except instead of the faces being different colors, they have different heights from the core of the cube. Now, let's jump into the design. The first thing I like to do when creating fully parametric designs is to plan. For the mirror cube, that involved measuring and estimating a bunch of the critical dimensions. Specifically, what was my cube going to be? What were rough estimates for the offsets of the mirror? What were some rough estimates for the inner and outer diameters? Measuring the screws, that type of thing. Once I had those, I made a planning sketch seen here inside a new component. And as I filled this in, I found if there were any other dimensions that I'd need. So you can see most of the interactions between the parts are in some way visualized here. So you can see this screw, which is the one that's closest, isn't going to go through the face. And the center here doesn't interact with the mechanism on the outside. So now we can finish that sketch. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the core. For the 3D modeling, we start at the core of the cube because we only need to make one of it, and it's a fairly simple design. For this, we did a new component, a simple sketch, revolve, circular patterns to make copies of it, and then a combine to bring the whole thing together. Later on, we'll apply fillets and clearances, but for now, the core is done. Quick interjection. We recently started a Patreon, so if you'd like early access, behind the scenes, and the source files for many of our designs, check it out. Next, we moved out from the core of the cube to the center of the face. For the initial design, we only created one face using the X offset, and we didn't add any fillets or clearances. Jumping into the sketch here, we can see that we have our screw dimensions, we have our core offset, we have our side of our cube, and of course we have our X offset here. And that is our face. Working our way out further, the next piece we create is the edge. In the same way the center is only created in X, the edge is only created in XZ. And obviously we'll come back to Phillips's clearances later. So going into the sketch, we can see this references our Z value, this references our X value. These dimensions are to make sure our edge doesn't interact with the core. And these dimensions are to make sure our edge doesn't interact with the other faces. So finish sketch. And then you can see what we did is two extrusions for these sections, then revolutions cutting them away from other stuff, and then combining them together to give us the edge. Finally, the corner. Following the same method as before, we create the XYZ corner and we don't apply any fillets or clearances right now. Jumping into the sketch, we see a somewhat similar but slowly getting more complicated design. Once again, we're avoiding the edges in this case, and we're avoiding the center section. And here you can see we have Z, and we have our X, but our Y is actually out here in this extrusion. And then similarly to our edge pieces, we have two extrusions, and we have revolves cutting stuff away, and then we combine them together. Now onto the fillets and clearances that I've been mentioning the entire time. So to get started, I made all the parts that I had made visible and compared them. I did actually have a few problems here where stuff was intersecting where it wasn't supposed to be, so I went back, fixed those before moving on. Once I was ready, I added parameters for fillets and clearances, based on where the fillets were going to be used. This makes it so that they can easily be modified in the future. So for example, if I want to print it on a less precise machine, I can just change these and increase the value. Or if I'm printing on a really, really precise machine, I can decrease the value so it's a very tight fit. Either way, they're super useful for when you want to be able to update all of those things quickly. Once I had put in estimate parameters for all those, I went in and I started adding the actual features. So in this case you can see filleting all of the stuff on this using the fill it in value. Outside uses fill it out value. 
And then we also did an offset feature of the clearance inside. And all of these had a similar process done of applying fillets and clearances. Another thing to remember here is that when you offset stuff, it can get thinner. So when I was first doing this, this value actually got too thin, but it became about 1.75 wall thicknesses for 3D printing, and that caused a bunch of problems, so I had to go back in and change the values around. Luckily, I didn't have to rebuild the parts that much. All I had to do was change what the core diameter was. As you may have noticed, we've been accumulating a lot of components as we've gone along, and I haven't explained much of that at all. So the way we're making all of our unique components is using Fusion 360's paste new functionality. For example, I can take my face X and I can copy and then paste new. Now this is a identical copy of this design. And if we open up the sketch, we can see that all of the parameter references are still intact. However, if I make any changes here, they don't update in the other design. So in this case, let's change the height here to be uh, cube side Y. You'll see it's now a different dimension. And this is now the correct height for the Y offset face. However, we've already made all of them, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that change. So we can turn on a handful of these, and you can see that they're all just in place where the original one is, one of our next steps is going to be positioning and moving everything around. But for now, something to be aware of about Paste New is that it's great as long as you want to make the changes that are outlined here. So if I want to change my side offset, super easy to do. If I want to change the diameter, the radius, the screw dimensions, anything like that is super easy to do with these Paste New components. The problem comes up is if I wanted to change the underlying design. So let's say I wanted to switch this from fillets to chamfers. I would have to go into every single component and switch that feature from fillets to chamfers. Another thing that we can talk about right now is grouping and moving stuff around. So as you can see, everything is put into nice groups here. And you'll also notice that if I'm clicking through you can see all of these are ordered, face x, face y, face negative y, that type of thing. Um, and that's because it's super useful to do that. So I didn't actually design the way the timeline is laid out. For example, these face y and face negative y were done as a copy new near the end of the initial designing. But I can actually move them around, and that will determine where they are in the browser. So now you can see some things got suppressed because they referenced those, so we're going to undo that. But by moving these around, let's say face Y, and let me grab them down here. Let's say I want these to be after the face Z features. I can move that, and now, once it computes, um, they are moved around. The easiest way to do this organization is by creating the paste news right where you want them to be. So for example, if I wanted to create another face for some reason, I would want to go right here in the timeline. Or maybe I wanted to add a second Y face for some reason. Maybe I was making a custom Y face. Now I would do paste new. So copy, paste new. Okay. And now when we jump forward in the timeline, you can see this new face Y is in with the other ones that it's supposed to be in with. So the way I normally design it is I'll design one copy of each unique thing. Um, so I design one face, one edge, one corner, and then I jump back in the timeline and do paste news and then edit all of these so that the Y face has is referencing the Y offset and the Z face is referencing the Z offset and the edge ones are offer are referencing the correct edges. For positioning all the pieces in this design, we did a few different things. So for the first thing, we made a ground of the core. 
Then we applied joints to all of the center pieces to keep them at the center faces. Next, we did movement to align all of the edges and the corners. We had some issues here because some of them, for example, if we're looking at this, like some of the corners, instead of being X, Z, Y, were X, Y, Z. So they were like clockwise instead of counterclockwise. To fix that, we went back into the sketch and the extrude and just switched which number was in which position. Once we had all that figured out, we have the cube that is in the solve state. And if we go forward, we can also use move commands and the capture position in order to make a move a cube in the scrambled state. And we're going to be using this for rendering. Going into the render workspace, obviously we've already been in here and set up some stuff, but starting from scratch, we went with a stainless steel cast material because I think it looks really nice. Um, it has a bit of texture to it. Um, and that was just dragged and dropped onto the parent component of everything. Then for scene settings, we went into environmental library and I found that soft light works for a lot of different renders. So before I do a longer render, I'll do an in-canvas render, and this kind of just gives me an idea of what I'll be working with for the final render. You can see it gets to excellent fairly quickly on this design, um, and I'm going to let it stop there. It's the loading bar that never wants to get to the end. So now it's done with this. This looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and do a render off from this. And I do local renders predominantly. We'll make this 1080, and final, and render. So that will render out, and that will be the end of the video. Thank you for watching.